Hi guys, so this is Anton Tenitsky, and in this little tutorial we will be talking about creating a procedural uh, mask for your UV seams. So here you can see my rock here, and you can see this noisy, quite organic looking seam going around the edge. And it looks way better than the usual sharp you know, UV scene. So let's look, take a look at the graph. Uh, it might look a little bit complicated, but it is really easy to set up. What we need to start with is this uh, convert UV to SVG node. You go to the um, linked mesh and go bake model information and we got a bunch of uh, maps that we don't need here and uh, this one that we need and uh, here in color mode you pick uh, either 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 uh, hue shift or material id apply it and bake it well it's already baked so we put it here and then uh, we'll obviously get this um, mask that's got an alpha background and uh, with the red uh, UV shell. Uh, so we create the channels shuffle node and we input the output of uh, SVG node to input 1 and uh, input 1 goes to well every channel here red, green and blue goes to input 1 alpha channel and then we add uh, then here in alpha channel we make it input 2 alpha channel. So after that, you apply the grayscale conversion and you get a proper black and white map. So after that, you create this um, little system of transformation nodes. And what they do, each one of them offsets the mask by a little value. I can see it here. And then uh, that little offset, you can see different values here. Uh, then uh, those offsets are plugged in, into the blend nodes. Oh, wait, I need to delete this. It was a little experiment. Uh, you plug it into blend node, blend node with a multiply overlay, and then it, by doing this, you are effectively contracting the mask because there is no other option to shrink the mask in Substance Designer. Uh, you can do it in Photoshop pretty easily, but not in Substance Designer. And um, if you're not sure what the transformation nodes are actually doing and how they look like, I'll show it in an example of Photoshop file. Right, so I've got this uh, texture here. And uh, let's go and offset and multiply it on top, right? So we offset it by 1 and 1 on Y and X axis. axis. And um, then you added another one and another one and another one. So now you shrink the max a little bit, but obviously you can see that we still have some troubled spots on these corners. And uh, what I didn't do in the Substance Designer setup, I, I could have added more transformation nodes and effectively uh, got rid of these points. But you can do it and do something like that. So it's uh, uh, another four offsets. I think that's a bit of overkill and I didn't need it for my particular project. But you might consider setting up and do something like that, like eight, having uh, eight nodes uh, overlaying, uh, multiplying on each top, top of each other. There's also another popular method for uh, shrinking or growing the mask. And this is by lowering it. So let's take a look at this. So, oh, let's start from scratch. So I've got the original copy, and so I'm blurring it right here. So the red border just shows the original, original UV border. Okay, so you got this, and then if you level it, you come to this. So it might be something that you could pick 
and it wouldn't use the transformation nodes, but I don't really like that it's coming way too close to the corners of the UV shell, and I found that uh, eventually you get a thicker, thicker UV seam, thick, thicker UV mask using the blued method. And I, I will show how to do it in Substance Designer. So I prefer this type of stuff because uh, it will still blue it a little bit, but you won't get that as much of a thickness in your UV seam. Okay, so we've got a multiplied um, mask, and then we uh, attach a blue node to blue it a little bit. You can see that's really just a tiny bit of a blue applied. I actually like to take a look at the how, how how this looks like. So you can see a thick line going across, just uniform black now black line. So we blew it. Now we get this edge. So and you, you really need to look at the at the corners here. This is a trouble spot. Okay, so we've got the final blending node here. And in the background we attach the blue node. And foreground we create the noise. And you can create any noise you want. It could be you know, clouds. Uh, here we have a black and white spot, number one. And then we clip it a little bit, so um, I get a more uh, contrast edge. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so we got this. And uh, you really need to create a mask for your noise so you can get a bit more, more of a breathing space for your noise. And you create it by create, uh, create another graph for your blue output. You invert it with this node. You want to increase scale, then you blue it a little bit more, and then you apply levels to clip the values. And you create a bigger mask that, that's driving the size of the noise. And I, I prefer to add uh, levels to make it, to add more contrast. And this is pretty much it, but I'll show you how to blur it. You know, there's that. Okay, so we got this. Levels. And uh, let's plug it in background and plug it in this mask. Okay, so you can already see if you're getting some problem, some some of the problems here. But you really need to clip it rather sharp here. And you can see that that corner here. It's it's really hard to get it right. And the overall mask is really, really thick. Okay, so so I can see that it's uh, really not the best way of doing this. And let's just uh, revert all our changes. And now let's take a look. If you want uh, a bit of a different noise pattern, like obviously just go and. You change the value on your level node. And it's really easy to apply this preset to any other model. In this case, I've got another rock. Let's load it. So, yeah, you see, it's the same preset. Slightly different because I changed some values on this, but it takes you two seconds to apply it. And that's uh, pretty much it. It concludes the tutorial. I'll I'll share with you the actual graph. Uh, I'll upload it to Dropbox, and I'll give you the link to it, so you can apply it to any of your projects. Um, and thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Goodbye.